Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about multiple trough injections with an intensifying snowstorm as the severe threat really ramps up. Welcome back everyone. I greatly appreciate all my 92,000 followers out there. I would love to get to 100,000 by Christmas. It's free to join. If you value my content, all you have to do is Click the subscribe button, and if you want to ring the notification bell to get notified when I do my daily updates every single morning to keep you ahead of the storm, I greatly appreciate it. So let's delve into the details because we have a lot going on this week in the weather department. So let's take a look at the overall water vapor imagery. And out here at the Pacific Ocean, we've got this huge storm system that sent the blizzard a couple days ago on the top of the summit out here in the Big Island. But more importantly, it's got crazy amounts of rains. It's been inundated the island. The, in fact, Hawaii is under a state of emergency right now where they've got some serious flooding going on with multiple inches of rain, some spots over a foot. And there's even isolated reports I've seen upwards to two feet of rain. And you got all this energy working together. So you got this dryer filtering in with the cold front that came through uh, just uh, yesterday. And then out ahead of it, you got that warm sector where, there, where they had some severe weather threats in Louisiana and parts of Mississippi. Now that's pushed off to the southeast. And then we had that snowstorm up into to, uh, in our north and in the upper Midwest, as well as the Great Lakes. But yeah, all this energy is actually going to be pushing further inland. And that's going to be hitting off the coast of California by Thursday. And that's going to set the stage for our big snow threat that's going to be coming up for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, as well as an intensifying trough that's going to be digging in that's going to really ramp up the severe threat as well. So let's kind of delve into the details and take a look at the, uh, the snow reports over the last 72 hours of that first significant snowfall that we talked about. And it really verified with, you can see the chart here in this grass of, over the last uh, 72 hours where the higher snow amounts have fallen. But yeah, I mean, sporadic amounts of 14 inches in North Dakota, 15 in Min uh, Minnesota here and parts of uh, Wisconsin got up to 16 inches. You can see the graph here in the, in the orange, all these 12 to 18 inch dots. That's all the places that got a foot to 18 inches of snow. And there's plenty of reports of good four to six into in portions of uh, Minnesota as well as Wisconsin. So that was a pretty good uh, snow event for the upper Midwest as well as uh, the Great Lakes. So now let's continue on what's gonna to happen today. So that we had that cold front that moved through that brought some severe weather threat is gonna be safely moving offshore. And now we look to our, 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 our another system that's gonna be coming in for parts of the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic that's gonna bring some light snow uh, for that region. And especially it'll start to pick up on the day on Wednesday where we could be looking at some lighter snow amounts in places into Pennsylvania, upstate New York, getting into um, uh, Connecticut, into Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, going into Maine here. And then we also have to look out to the west where we've got that, again, that big system that's going to be making its way out on shore, bringing the rains back. But yes, even much needed rains coming back for places into California. Even Los Angeles could get into the action with some rain showers moving back in for them as we've got those snowstorms really starting to intensify as we get into the day, really on Thursday. Because as we get into Thursday, that system will be on shore by then, dumping some uh, some light to moderate rains in and around uh, California. And then where it's going to be cold enough, it's going to be in, in the form of snow and the places into Wyoming, going into Colorado, and some heavier snows at times where we've got that uh, other kind of clipper system coming through that uh, could actually leave some sporadic uh, freezing rain. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But down to the south, it rapidly warms up. And here's the here's by the picture on Thursday. You got some freezing temperatures this morning in parts of Texas, but you can see the warm front. It rapidly warms up quickly in a big way. We're talking record high temperatures potentially by the time we get on a Thursday. And then you have that strong cold front heading your way. And that's going to set the stage for our severe threat that's going to be coming up uh, this weekend. So, but it's Thursday, you can take a look at the temperatures. Man, this is really unusual for December. We're talking mid 80s for South Texas, 79. That would be tying your record high temperature in Dallas, uh, low to mid 70s in Oklahoma. 
So it's got plenty of pr plenty of warmth to fuel to fuel the fire from these storms with this developing cold front that's going to be digging in. In fact, by the time we get into that Thursday night into Friday, uh, that snow could be close enough to break this snow drought in Denver. I am definitely expecting it as this is really going to ramp up. So we're going to have a, a diving trough that's going to be coming in and that's going to kind of split to the north when it splits that's going to pull that energy so you got all that energy coming from hawaii right that's leaving all the flooding rains right now so that's a lot of energy to work with it's going to tap into that much heated atmosphere uh, that's going to be really ramping up over the next couple of days and once it taps into that that's going to make the turn atmosphere turn over and it's going to be forming into some heavier snows into places like N nebraska into south dakota getting into parts of iowa as well as portions of minnesota here and then you got that southern southern branch where it's going to be uh set the stage for our possible uh, severe threat that's going to be coming up because by the time we get into friday we're talking 84 degrees that is highly unusual for december standards i mean almost 90 in south texas <laughs> that's plenty of heat upper 70s in oklahoma mid 70s in arkansas we got widespread 70s going all the way to Missouri. That is well above average for this time of year. And you can actually see where the cold front is gonna be lying by the time we get into Friday night. And so it's it's gonna clash with those with that system. And then to the north, you're gonna have your snow, snow event with some heavier snows still breaking out in Iowa and, and portions of uh, Minnesota here, as well as Wisconsin getting back in the action with more snow for places like in Green Bay. And I know they get that big game coming up on a Sunday they are Sunday night so uh yeah there's it snowed yesterday and they'd be getting a fresh coating maybe before the game starts by the time we get into uh Sunday night but yeah that southern sector that southern branch is really going to get its act together with that uh, enhanced trough that's going to be setting the stage and look at that the latest uh 500 millibar by the time we get in that Saturday time frame that man it really digs south and where you've got that injection up to the uh, on on the right side here, man, that is some could be in some intense activity. We're going to be seeing a sharp temperature gradient along this boundary. Some temperatures could fall 20 to 30 degrees in an hour. So that gives you an idea of what we're up against because we got that so much heat that's going to be building in and then that strong cold front really rapid uh, rapidly moves through and that could really turn over the atmosphere and really set the stage for uh, a severe weather threat including all three modes of severe weather for tornadoes uh damaging winds and some larger hail because man we got plenty of moisture to deal with with the atmosphere i mean it's kind of unheard of to see dew points not just in the 60s but almost in the 70s down here in the south so yeah i mean it's got plenty of juice to fuel these fires you can see the difference here from 65 dew point to 38 dew point that's a sharp sharp temperature gradient as they storms uh move, move through so it could get pretty bumpy by the time we get into that friday night saturday time frame i think this one's a little bit further to the south i'm not sure i think it actually is going to be too fast for say the dallas fort worth area i think it really sets up kind of in eastern uh oklahoma this is the latest uh, gfs uh model right now depicting on where the severe threat could be but it's more or less going to be in missouri and to arkansas going into parts of louisiana and this will continue on to northern parts of alabama and it's going to be a fast moving system so these are going to be quickly quickly moving storms we're talking 30 40 possibly 50 miles an hour at times with a sharp temperature gradient coming back in on the backside. so these will be a quick uh, quick hit uh, with these with this feature and you can see the water vapor imagery where you've got that uh, out in that warm sector and out where they where they could be, be looking at convective banding yeah that could be looking at some definitely some heavier rains setting up and this is a small narrow corridor and places like in the mississippi going into no, uh, northern alabama getting into parts of tennessee going through kentucky and going through ohio here those areas could be under the gun for some actually some flooding flooding rains by the time we get into friday night going into saturday with that convecting banding uh really setting up but that nasty trough just continues moving across and as it does it's going to bring the severe threat too so again it's going to be a very quick moving system as this rapidly moves across but all these areas are going to be under the gun for that severe threat including 
uh, damaging winds. You're going to have some straight line winds with this particular system of 60 to 70 miles an hour. And then you also got that tornado threat and some of the larger hail is going to be following with this system. It's going to be pretty dynamic uh, movement across as it continues. And this is where the severe threat could be by the time we get into Sunday right here in the Dixie Alley area and to Mississippi and Alabama and getting into parts of uh, Georgia as well as the Tennessee Valley. And this will just extend into the Carolinas. So this, again, it's a fast moving system. And these areas along the East Coast will be hit as well with some nasty storms by the time we get into later uh you know saturday night going into that sunday uh time frame so, because as we move into that sunday time frame this would just continue moving across off the east coast then now i mean some models actually have some of this forming into snow on the backside. i'm kind of ruling that out at the moment but that's definitely not out of the question more or less it's going to be a severe threat because it's just a quick hit of, of, of a very dynamic system coming through uh, with, a, again, more heavier rains and that severe threat going to be along the East Coast by the time we get into Sunday. So we've got a lots of ups and downs. We've got a lot of big swings and temperatures uh, this week. So it's going to be a lot of moving parts. But we could be looking at this pretty, pretty big snow event uh, coming up through the midsection of the country. It's heavier snows through the through uh, Colorado. And I do think right now it looks about one to three inches Thursday night, Friday morning into Denver, where they do finally break that snow, snow drought. But as it moves on from Denver, I think it really starts to intensify. And you could be looking at multi inches of snow, if not a good four to six, and even some banding again where that convective banding lines up an eight to 12 inch swath that's going to be setting up over portions of uh, Nebraska, getting into Iowa, portions of Minnesota, and especially as you get into uh, Wisconsin, going into upper portions of uh, Michigan here, as this would this would en really enhance the snow threat. And the latest GFS kind of impl implies the same thing. They're, they're all kind of lining together now as this thing gets really starts to get this act together. So you have your snow band to the north, and you've got that severe threat uh, to the south with a very uh, active week ahead, it looks like, uh, currently. So this is where some of the rain could fall. We've got that atmospheric river still in full effect. Uh, man, they've had some record rainfalls in uh, you know, November into British Columbia. Now that just heavier rains just continued for those regions. Uh, but some much needed rains are moving back into California and to Nevada. And even in the desert southwest is going to get into the action on the Four Corners regions. And then more importantly, rains in Colorado and going into places like Denver. You can see they desperately need the rain. West Texas needs the rain. Midland's been, what, almost three months since they've really seen much rain as a lot of these systems really kind of set up here lately. Just say east of the Dallas Worth area and say east of Oklahoma City area, but they really start ramping up once they get into uh, places into the uh, and places into the southeast. And I think that's going to be setting again that same 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 setup as we've been seeing as of late. And some of these could be pretty nasty. And then then along that boundary here, some of these could be some some flooding rains starting to set up as as well. But Next week, we might have to do it all over again because the atmosphere is pretty transient right now. We've got a lot of big swings in temperatures. And this is really rare, guys, from the Climate Prediction Center predicting over a 90% chance of, you're talking 20 to 40 degrees above average temperatures for a good chunk of the country. So this is definitely rare. It's actually the most significant one they put out since December of 2015. So we're talking fairly rare territory as again a lot more fuel is going to be added to the atmosphere even next week as the atmosphere really unloads and we might have to do all this same situation all over again by the time we get in the next week as well so it's going to be a bumpy ride for the next two weeks with a lot of big swings and temperatures and some a lot of heat and a lot of record temperatures and unfortunately some severe weather and but still you're going to get some heavier snows on the table as well so hey i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where i protect you before and after the storm